Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf Hayemi, Chulun Daf Hayem Beis. We begin 15 lines off the top of the Amid in reference to Tuma Blua. So we made the uh, um, mention yesterday about a machlekes, whether something which is uh, swallowed up, something which is Blua, enveloped in something else, such as the unborn, you know, Ubar, the embryo, inside its mother, who turns out to be lifeless. Is that going to be metame if one actually inserts a hand and touches it? Rabbi Kiva says yes. Rabbi Shmuel says no. So where do we find this machlekes? Where do we find this discussion between Rabbi Shmuel, who says tuma b'loa is not metame, versus Rabbi Kiva, who says it does? My Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Kiva, where's the address for this machlekes? The Sanya. It's actually in a brace, based on a pasuk that we uh, we all know from Parshas Chukas. Right? If one touches Tuma, which is Alpne Hasada, Rashi says. The term Alpne Hasada is Mashma Goli, exposed, open. Says the the Braisa, this will exclude Uber Bameisha, the unborn child inside the mother. Although he's lifeless, but he's not a gullah, he's not open, he's not exposed, he's inside. Divir Rabbi Shmuel, who says that in this case, there's no tumah. Rabbi Kiba Aymer, no, there is tumah for an enveloped tumah. Rather, according to him, the Pasuk is applied differently. Not to exclude the Ubar, rather to include something else. Rabbi Kiba Aymer, the to include Gailel. Rashi learns that's the cover of the coffin, the daifek, the... Um, The walls of the of the coffin around the maze. So we need a special pasuk that it's considered like the actual maze. It's matami even in an oil under the same roof as the uh, uh, you know as the person person enters the same room as these things. He's he's tummy. Okay, so it's coming to include that. Rabbi Shmuel he responds. There's no need for a pasuk for these items because yeah, goyel v'dayfik that exude tuma. That's Hilchas Agmiru. It's based on Ochom Eshem Sinai. Not on this pasuk. Rather, the pasuk is coming to exclude the Uber. Rabbi Kiva, he disagrees entirely. He says Uber b'Meisha. This Uber is Tami Milai Raisa Minole. And the question is, how does he know that? Amar Beisha Amakro. The pasuk says, Hanegia b'Meis b'Meis b'Nefesh Ha'adam. Oh. B'meis b'nefesh ha'adam. Says Rabbi Kiva, guess what? It means you touch the meis, which is b'nefesh, inside somebody else. Ei zehu meis she b'nefesh ha'adam. What exactly is this? How do you have an example of it? A meis inside another. Have a oimer? Oh, that must be the uber. The uber that's inside is his mother. Shmei And we see that's metamu. Rabbi Shmuel, he uh, counters by saying, no, this pasuk is for something else. It's needed to tell you. You have just a revius, a couple of ounces of blood. Originating from a mace. Shemitama. That it's also mitami. It also exudes tuma. Not only the flesh, the bones, even the, the dam. From where? How do we know this? Shenemar, from this pasak. And the reviews of Dam is the uh, smallest amount of, of blood that can generate life, can give vitality. Some of Arsham learned that you know, the, the embryo at its earliest stages, small one, is sustained by a reviews of Dam. That's enough to sustain life. And therefore, if that amount of blood comes from a mace, that represents the life and conversely, in this case, death. And it's metame. Shanemar nagea b'meis b'nefesh ha'adam. Ezeo nefesh. So we learned, what is the... What is being referred to as the nefesh? Shal adam. Of a person shal metame, which is metame. Have oimer. Oh! That's a revius. It's a revius of dam. That's a bishmo. And Rabbi Kiva did not want to learn this pasuk as a reference to revius of dam. You know why? Although he agrees. 
that in fact there is Tumah for Revius of Dam from Emmaus. Of course there is. But he holds, it goes a step further. Rabbi Kiva Tamei, Rabbi Kiva, follows his respective opinion. The who says, Af Revius Dam, Habo Mishnei Mesim Matama Boil. Even if the Revius of Dam is sourced in two separate masons, so you have a half Revius from one mace, half Revius from the other mace, you can join them together and Smetama even in the oil. Why? The sign of Kiva Oimer. Menai, how do we know the Rabbi is Dama Ba Mishnei Meis? How do we know Rabbi is coming from two Meis and Tamboil, which gives off Tuma even under the same oil? Meaning that it's Matami on the highest level. If a person walks into a room with a Rabbi is of Dama that came from two Meis and there's Tuma's oil, Shanamar. Valko Navshois. Navshois is plural. Valko Navshois Meis Layavoy. And we learn from here, it could be one Rabbi is from two separate sources. Shtein of Fashis, from two lives, two Meis. Vishir Echad, even though it's just one shear coming from both of them. It's Metami. So, according to him, the Allah that Rabbi is, Abdam, is Metami. Cannot be learned from that earlier Pasuk. Hanagiyah B'meis B'nefesh. That's singular. He learns that even if it's sourced in two, from two separate Mesim, now called Nafshish Mesim, that's his Pasuk. Which leaves him with the earlier Pasuk. Of Hanagiyah uh, B'meis B'nefesh Adam. For his Allah, the mace, the nef, she touched an uber in the mother, even though it's Tumah Balu, it's Matama. Okay, so bottom line is we have two separate tracks in terms of how to apply these psukim. We have Rabbi Shmuel's track, Rabbi Kiva's track, Rabbi Shmuel's based on the Allah that Tumah Balu is not Matama, in which case he applies the Pasuk of an Agiyah, the mace, the Adam, as pertaining to reviews of Dam, and Mechola Shalik Alpni Asada. Actually, it is going to exclude the Uber of Meisha and the Goyal of Daifik. Oh, Allah Hu Meishim Sinai. Rabbi Kiva learns, even the Uber of Meisha is Tamei, and I get the Meis Benefesh. He touched the Meis inside the Nefesh. How do we know Rabbi is Dam? That's in the other pasuk. Kol Nafshis Meis. What about Kol Asher Yigap Ni Asada? That's coming to uh, cover the guy of the Daifik. Okay, continues the mission. Behema Makasha Leilid. So you have an animal having a hard time birthing. And the unborn animal sticks his hand out. And the farmer cut it off. Afterwards, he did shrita to the mother animal. So although the uh, limb, the, let's say, you know, let's say the hand, right, that was cut off, is not going to be covered by the mother shechita as per the rest of the uber, which is covered by the mother shechita, due to the fact that it's a ben pakur, the hand was extended, was out, during the shechita, it's not covered, you can't eat it. But habasa tar, the rest of the unborn and the mother animal, it's tar, because there was no contact. Rashi says, a behemoth is not going to become tummy during its lifetime, So, since he removed the, uh, the problematic hand before the shechita, there was no opportunity for everything to become tummy. But, let's say he did the shechita on the mother animal, which covers itself and the unborn as well. And this was done while the hand was still attached. Now, the hand is asr, it's eber menachai. And then he detached the hand. What happens to the rest of the basr that touched that hand? Habas or Magan Avela says, it's as though it touched an Avela, because this hand is also, it's, tre- it's called Trefa, it's Eva Menachai, which, uh, tra- which uh, transmits Tumor like, like an Avela, like a dead animal, to anything that was in touch with it. They disagree, they say, look, even though the, the Shrita of the mother animal did not address, did not cover, did not exempt this hand, this hand was outside. So it's still awesome. But, but, to some extent, it did benefit from the mother animal's shrita. It did impact even this hand to the extent that it doesn't slide into the severe tumor of tumor of Vela. Rather, it's considered like something which is forbidden, like, like trefa, that had shrita. We all know that trefa that undergoes shrita is not going to be tummy, like Eva Menachai, it's not going to be tummy, like an Avela. It has a very minimal tumor, Midrabanan, as we'll see later. So again, we're talking about a hand that was outside during the Shkita, 
so it doesn't get exempted by the shechit. It's not mutter to eat. Okay, so that's that's a given. Going to all shechitas. What about its tumah status? Rameer says it's tummy. It's a live limb of our animal. It's like Eivim and Achai. And it's matame. Very severely. In which case, anything that was attached to it after the shechit of the mother becomes tummy because after the shechit of the mother everything becomes like flesh. Gets converted into flesh. The mother animal, even the unborn animal inside of it. Considered like flesh. Doesn't need shechit anymore. It's considered like food. And food that touches something which is tummy becomes tummy. Chacham disagree. The shechit of the mother spares it from becoming tummy. We turn to Amit Beis. So they are using the, the precedent of shechita on a treifa, which spares it from tuma, and applying it to this case. Mamatzina, just like we find the treifa, a real animal that has an internal defect, it's never going to be edible. The shechita is not going to permit it for consumption, but it will spear it from becoming an avela. It is considered a shechita experience to that extent. A shechita meant to accomplish two things. Permit for consumption, and spirit from becoming a carcass. So although it can't really accomplish A, it could accomplish B. Mama, it seems like we find the treifa. She shechita semet aharosa, the shechita of a treifa spears it from becoming tamay, af shechita as behima, likewise over here. The shechita of the mother animal to tire us, will spare the arm from tamay. Arm alem remei, remei responds. How can we compare to a regular, ordinary treifa that had shechita? Loi, im tiara shechita as treifa oisa. It's true. That if a, uh, an ordinary treifa animal that had shechita is spared from tumah, you know why? Davash gufa because it's its own self. So the shechita of the treifa spares it from becoming a novella. But to go extend it to the arm of the unborn animal within it, that's a bit of a stretch. To tire, you're going to suggest that it's going to spear from tumah as ever, even the, the arm of the unborn davash gufa, which isn't really part and parcel of the mother? Okay, so that was the argument. Now, how do we know, in fact, that a shechita of a treifa animal can accomplish that, can spare it from becoming a novella? Menayin le treifa, how do we know that by a treifa, she shechita, the shechita experience on that treifa matarasa will spare it from becoming tummy? The answer is like this. We compare the treifa, which is inedible, to an unkosher behemoth, which is also inedible. So really, this is a question mark. We should compare this to that, just like by a behemoth tmeya, shechita has no positive impact. Perhaps shechita on a treifa can't really accomplish either. So it's a, sort of a challenge. We're challenging this premise. Behemoth tmeya surah ba'achila, right? An unkosher animal, you can't eat it. Av treifa, likewise a treifa, is also a surah ba'achila. Let's compare, let's link. Ma behemoth tmeya, just like by an unkosher animal, ein shechita samtara, so the shechita of that animal will not do it any good. Rashi brings a whole discussion in Teres Koyanim. The shechita of an unkosher animal doesn't have any positive impact. So likewise, by a treifa. If it can't accomplish edibility, permissibility, perhaps it cannot protect it from tumah. Af treifa, loy te taranam shechita. Says the word, no, 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 no. You can't compare the two. Loy, im amras b'mhim etzmeya. You know why by an unkosher animal? Shechita is not impactful. Shaloy hoysa l'shasa kosher. It never had a moment in, in time of potentiality. to become mutter through shechita. It's of the unkosher variety. It's a non-starter. So in that case, you can understand very well that shechita has no relevance. So I remember a treifa as opposed to a, a kosher animal, which happens to be a treifa. It got sick. It got defective. It got... But it had a moment in time, way back, where shechita was relevant to this animal. And Rashi says, since Torah's shechita was chal on it, it was in the realm of Shechita. It was covered under the Shechita system at a certain point in time. It never leaves it. Tulei paka mine. And therefore it's considered to a certain extent like any other animal. Even though technically the Shechita in this case will not accomplish the permissibility, the heterachila, but it can still do the first part, spirit from becoming an avail. Says the Gemara, yeah, well it depends how severe the treifa is. Maybe it was born a treifa. It was born missing uh, half the heart, right? So, 
In that case, it had no potential. What are you going to say over there? Why would Shechita be relevant? Take back your argument. Meaning, suppose it was born. When it ran, ran out of the mother, it was already a tray from Menayin. This case, how do we know that Shechita can help it? Never had potential for permissibility. Says the Gemara. But still, it's different than a Behemoth Tmeya. You know why? Loy, im amris Behemoth Tmeya. Because all about Behemoth Tmeya, we say Shechita is totally not relevant. Shekein ain't be mino Shechita. There's no Shechita in its type, in its variety, in its whole family. It's not... Uh, it doesn't relate to Shechita. Shechita has no say in the matter. But by a sheep, Shechita does work. Although in this particular case, where it's a severe trafe, or was born a trafe, you're right, but in its type, Shechita is relevant. Time of a trafe, Sheesh b'mina Shechita. And therefore we can fully understand why Shechita will positively impact even a trafe of this, of this ilk. He writes, says the, says the Mishnah, if you need to have this sort of condition that in its type, Shechita will be fully affected, so you'll find a, a type a kosher animal, but of a type where shechita is totally not relevant. For instance, ben shmoina. <laughs> you have a, an animal who's uh, not full term. He's only eight months. He's not, uh, he's not uh, viable. And you discover him, chai, he's alive. In this case, in this case, in this case, The, the Shechita will not um, will not help it in any way. And Rashi says, I feel a nishchad, even if you shech the actual, you know, eight month uh, calf here. You know why? You know why? You Because there's no Shechita in its type. It's not a viable animal. And it has no potential. And therefore, Shechita is totally not relevant to this, uh, to this type and will not spirit from becoming an available. Okay, so bottom line is like this. You have a halacha. An animal which turned into a treif, or was even born treif. If it experiences shechita, although you can't eat it, but it's still going to be tar. Provided it's of the type of animal that um, that has generally has shechita, as opposed to the ben shmoina, which uh, is a non-starter, it's a non-viable entity. And by extension, say the chachamim, the arm that was extended out of the mother. Well, although it's Asr, it's considered like Trefa, it's like Eber Achai, but if the mother animal experienced Shechita, to a certain extent it will positively impact even this arm, to the extent that it won't become Tame, it will stay to her. Continues the Gemara with a question, uh, hold it. So, according to Ramir, the, uh, the arm that was out of bounds is not covered by the mother's Shechita, it is tame. it's going to transmit tuma to the rest of the ubar, the unborn animal. But where are they touching? They're touching in a very concealed fashion. That's the arm connected to the rest of the animal. So that's called maga beis hastarim, when two things are touching in a concealed, covered manner. Right? The point of contact between the, the arm and the rest of is hidden, it's concealed. It's inside, it's the, you know, the flesh inside. That's called Beis Hastarim. There should be no transfer of tuma in that manner. Am I? Why is there a tuma spreading from this arm to the rest of the animal that it's connected to? Tumas Beis Hastarim, it's tuma in a concealed place. And that, uh, that doesn't transfer. But Tumas Beis Hastarim, this type of tuma, loin metamia, doesn't transfer tuma. Wow, says the Gemara. This is Rameir speaking. Rameir holds that uh, it does. Lema Rameir Tamei. Shall we say Rameir? Who holds that there's transfer in our case from the arm to the rest is consistent with his own opinion. Stated elsewhere that there is no issue 
that it does transmit in this manner. This not a Mishnah, Shloisha al Shloisha. Shunech, like we have a piece of material which is large enough to serve as a, as a seat for a person who is a Zav, who is Tami. It's three Tvachim by three Tvachim. Large enough to function as a medras, as a, as a seat, right? And now it becomes very Tami, very severe level of Tumah applied to a medras. It becomes an Ava Tumah, a source of Tumah. Provided, it contains the size that makes it functional, makes it usable as a seat. So this shleisha shleisha shnechlak was split into two. Uh, it lost its size. It lost its usability. Torah min medras. It's now free of the higher tuma, but it just drops one level. It gets downgraded. Avil tame. It's tame as though it touched a medras, maga medras. So it's a rishon l'tum. Why? Because it touched itself. <laughs> It's no longer top tier, but when it was losing the top tier level uh, category, you know, status, it sort of was still touching itself. So it gets downgraded just one level. Divramir, it's Ramir Shita, because it touched its own self. Although you can argue that it was in a concealed fashion, it was touching itself, right? Inside, Kontramir, and that also qualifies. Divramir. But Rabbi Yassi disagrees. Bitanya. Amr Abiyasi, what, what do you mean? If it lost its medras status, it should be free of tumor altogether. It didn't touch anything afterwards. Amr Abiyasi, Bechiba Eiza, medras nagazeh. This split piece of material, which medras did it touch? It touched itself while it was being split? That's based on star. Ella, I agree. Yeah, that if Shem Naga by Hazav, if initially when the Zav sat on it, he uh, touched it with his beer, you know, foot. So not only did he actually sit, but there was direct contact between the Zav and the material. So then, yeah, the material has two statuses of Tumat's Midras, because it served as a seat, but also it came into contact with the Zav, so it has Mecca Midras. That remains. Okay, so I agree in this case, because it had a double reason for Tuma, Midras and Maga, Hazav. So even though when it was split, it lost its Midras status, but it retained its Maga Hazav status. Eloshim Naga by Azav. If initially Azav actually touched it directly with his flesh, Shaytam and Magazav. So now it still has that. But Ramir says, uh, even concealed contact is considered a mode of transfer. And likewise, the arm affecting the rest of the unborn animal. Well, love it, my love, but haven't we learned an explanation on that? On that uh, halacha, meaning uh, it doesn't have to be. That it's only Rameir uh, who holds that by the uh, Medrash that it works, because really we have learned an explanation. We elaborated on that halacha. Amar Ula. Loishana, when does Rabbi Yesi take issue? When does he disagree? If it's an exactly, you know, exact three by three piece of material that's split into two. So as we started splitting it, it lost its size. Lost its size, lost its status. And just because it touched itself, well, that's base Astar. Avil Sholosh al Sholosh. But suppose it was a piece of material, three by three finger widths, right? Which is uh, sufficient to give it, you know, basic tuma, not too much matter, just basic tuma. Habois and Begad Gadol that was snipped off of a big garment. You have a big roll of material that became tamay. And the uh, big roll was uh, served as a uh, cushion for the Zav, it became Tomas Medrus. And then he clipped off a little piece, three by three uh, finger widths of material. In this case, even Rabbi Yaisi agrees that that material, that clip, will have the din of Maga Medrus, will be a Rishon the Tuma. Why? Because in this case, the large roll, the large garment is still intact. It's still producing tumma, even as the little piece is being snipped off of it. So that last little thread, when it's still, still hanging by a thread, that point of contact that is exposed, it's gully. It's not based on story. So at that moment, this little snippet is in a very, very real, outright, 
having an interaction, a very outright open interaction with the uh, roller material, in which case it's called maga and becomes tough. Bishas, prishas, and mavi, and when it's being snipped and separated from its father entity, from the greater entity, which is still going to stay as a tumor producing entity. You see, the, uh, unlike the uh, small piece of material, which was three by three tfach, and that was split into two, once you start splitting it, it lost its medrus status, right? So each piece that's being sort of separated is not touching a full entity. Right? The only thing you could say is that initially when it was 3 by 3 it was touching itself, so to speak, so even though it lost its higher status, but at least it should retain its lower status because it sort of touched itself, but that's based on time. But over here, where you're snipping a piece off of a larger entity, and that larger entity remains intact, a big role. It's not losing its status. It's staying as a producer of tumor. So this little snippet detaches, and you're holding at the last thread, Bishas Prisha. It's considered exposed. That thread is just, you know, a very exposed thing. There's contact between this and that, and therefore, it is considered as though it touched that greater entity, it came into contact and received tumor from it, that's considered Maga Medras. Aval Sholosh, Al Sholosh, Haboys, and Begad Godlo, Bishas Prishas, and Mavin, when it's being separated, Mikavlos Tumor. Mavin, it's Mikavlos Tumor from its greater entity. Oh, Nami, so if that's the case, if these pieces coming off the big block will get Tumor from their source. Here as well, the arm it's being detached from the, uh, the animal inside. Hanami bishas prishasan me'eva, when the uber is being separated from the aver. Mikabal tumah me'eva is mikabal tumah from that aver. The last thread, as it's being pulled apart, is touched, is contact, this transfer of tumah. And that's not Pesach Storm, it's revealed. So we thought our Mishnah could only go on like Rameer, Pesach Storm transfers tumah. No, in this case, even Rabbi agrees, there's an open, revealed, exposed transfer, you know, conduit. Ravina Omar, this is another reason why Rabbi Yassi would agree in our Mishnah that there is transfer of Tumah between the Aver and the rest of the animal. Beged lav A beged, a garment, a piece of material, is not meant to be split into two. It's all a single, inseparable entity. So there's no touching within itself. It's, 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 it's concealed. Uber the but the uh, arm. The arm. That went out of bounds. It's meant to be chopped off the, um, it, it's also bachil, it's meant to be disengaged, and disconnected from the rest of the unborn. The chatechiko, it's meant for it, it's slated for it. So it's no, long, no longer regarded as a single inseparable entity. It's like two pieces touching each other. And the point of contact is not considered concealed and embedded within. Something which is meant to be cut off. Turn to the next page. The chatechiko, we treat it as though it's already disengaged and disconnected. And therefore there's an outright exposed point of contact. This logic follows only Rav Meir, who seems to say that slated for trimming is considered trimmed. This not we have a similar halacha regarding a long handle of a, a pot that became tummy, you have to be table it. It's not call you this You have a, a hand, a yad of a clear, it's very long. But also the cuts on slated for trimming, he's gonna trim it down. How far do you have to be toiled? You have to find a humongous mikvah to accommodate this huge mat pilad mokamid, just table until where you're gonna you know, or retain a foot or whatever it is, 12 in. So past that point, don't worry about it. Because it's meant to be trimmed off, we can just disregard it. No, you have to tell the whole handle. It's there, it's part of it. As long as it's there, treat it accordingly. No. So our logic seems to only follow Rameer. Slated for trimming is considered trimmed. I feel the Rabbon. No, our logic can follow even the Rabbon. Who say that the handle of a Kli is still regarded as the Kli as long as it's there. Food is different. Flesh is different. Chibura Eichlan Keman Demifrasi Dami. A connected food is considered separate. It's not an inseparable entity. It actually says Rachan. It's soft material. It's, it's separate. It's, it's sliceable. It's meant to be... It's different than a solid, you know, piece of metal, a long arm. That's one entity. But a food is, you know, just a conglomerate of, 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 <laughs> of particles. It's, 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 it's not considered 
a single inseparable entity. Rashi says, Rachan, it's soft, it's... In which case, you could fully understand that the arm, which is basically a piece of flesh, is sort of separate from the rest of the Uber, it's touching it. And the point of contact is not embedded, it's not considered embedded within a, some sort of closed entity. It's open, it's exposed, it's contact, and there's two. Okay, so now we have two reasons, two explanations in the Allah of the Mishnah, why the arm transmits Tumma to the rest of the Uber, according to Ula, because as it's being removed, being detached, that last moment, the last, you know, hair, that last fiber, before it's fully detached, is considered the point of contact which is open and exposed and serves as a conduit for transfer of Tumma. And according to um, Ravina, it's because it's slated for detachment. And that's, uh, that makes it sort of a separate entity. Now the Mishnah refers to the fact that they chopped off the arm. According to Ula, can understand why. That's the mechanism for the transfer of Tumat, during the removal, during the detachment, that it happens. Hainu Diktani Chatacha El Ravina. But come to Ravina, even without actually chopping it off, even while it's still attached, it's considered as though it's detached. My Chatacha, so why refer to the fact that it was chopped off? Yeah, it's not really necessary. I did Hanerisha Chatacha. It was simply on account of the first Halacha, the Mishnah. Where Chatacha is actually a required element. Over there what happened was they uh, chopped off the arm and then they did shechita on the mother. So because the arm was removed ahead of time prior to shechita, there's no tumor being transferred to the live uber because there's no tumor on a live uber. So that's why it needed to say chatoch. And on account of that, it's sort of repeated in the next case as well, even though it's not really a necessary feature of the halacha. Tadunami sefer, likewise, it repeated in the sefer as well. In the next halacha chatoch that was chopped, even though it's not really uh, you know, relevant. Okay, so in a nutshell, we have machlekes here. We all know that a, a trefa animal that experienced shkita, well, although the, although the shkita was not permitted for consumption, but it spares it from becoming tummy, regarding the arm of the uber that went out. And then the mother was shechta. What happens to that arm? What happens to the rest of the uber that it's attached to? So according to Chachamim, it's, uh, it's all protected. It's covered by the mother's shkita. It's, uh, you know, the arm is asr, but the, there's no tumor going on. There's no tumor being transferred. So the, the shkita of the mother at least accomplishes that. Whereas according to the mayor, it's not going to be covered by the mother shkita. There will be tum on the arm, and likewise, it spreads the rest of the the animal. In terms of the question of the uh, tumas based astorim, we had two ways to resolve that issue. All the best to you, and atzlochah.